Hey guys, Catch22, I'm Bill, thanks for the click. Today I've got just a simple unboxing for you folks, but I know you guys find this stuff uh, interesting. So this is something new and a little bit different for me anyways, and uh, I'm hoping you guys will find an interest in it, at least as much as I have an interest in it. I've been toying around with the idea of making my own soft plastics. Um, yes, soft plastics can be cheap and um, they make amazing products out there. Why the heck am I going to make plastics instead of just going out there and buying some? Well, a couple reasons. One is it's, it's a hobby just like anything else. I think it might be fun, <clears throat> so I thought I would try it. And I only got like a starter pack with a couple extras that I think I would use. Um, and two, content for the channel. You know, weather's a little weird here in Michigan and I can't always um, go fishing. It's either too warm to ice fish and too cold to fish open water. So, I thought I'd get creative. So, this comes from a company called Fusion X, and um, I believe you can order directly through them, but I found them on Amazon, and that's where I ordered from. So, inside this starter pack, you get a catalog, catalog of all their products, which is molds, and plastics okay second is an instructional sheet and third are actual plastics that you can melt down so let's see what colors that I have in this pack in this pack I have electric plum electric plum is the deep pink purpley color with some blue flake. Let me see if you can't see that. I think you can. Next I have avocado. Avocado seems to be not quite as light as watermelon but not as dark as green pumpkin. Somewhere in between and it's got a gold an orange flake inside. So I'm sure that'll be nice and deadly. And now we have dark pumpkin. Dark pumpkin just seems to be the solid with no flake in it. Okay. That's the color. It's a little more brown in this lighting, but I'm sure it'll make a nice pumpkin. <clears throat> so on here, it, it tells you a couple things on the packaging. These are lure making cubes. You just melt them down and then you can pour them into your, um, in your mold. The hardness on this plastic is rated a medium. The density is standard. And then the scent is X-Fuse, which I am not familiar with. I'm sure if you go to their website, they, they'll tell you all about X-Fuse. But this is pretty cool. Um, a lot of people out there, if you take a look at some uh, videos on pouring plastics, you'll see that they, they, they take it even a step further. They, they get their own, uh, it's called plastisol, and it's a liquid plastic that you heat up, and, um, and then it becomes, as it cools after you've heated it, it becomes harder like the soft plastics that we use. And then they introduce their own dyes, their own flake, their own scents. I mean, you can take this hobby really, really seriously and uh, really far. But seeing as I'm just starting out with it, I thought I would do go this route. It's fairly inexpensive. I believe this starter kit was only $25. And, um, just to get me going and see if, you know, this is something that I like, something that I want to continue to do. We'll see. Smelly. 
that's for sure. So let's get to the molds and other things that came in, came with this. Let's see. So you have several baggies that seem to be oiled. So when you're done making your plastics, you have a ready-made container for you. I'll hold this up. I'll see if you can't see the oil that's in the in the bags. So that's pretty cool. These seem to have a nice little area to write down a description maybe on your plastics. You've got some popsicle sticks or tongue depressors for a mixing tool, I'm sure. And then we have the actual molds. And let's see, they're listed here. First, I have a four and a half inch shaky SX worm, which is this guy here. So I plan on, uh, yeah, it'll go on a shaky head, but I also plan on using this as a drop shot bait. Mm. So that's pretty cool. It's a silicone mold. It's flexible and it's durable. I like the flexibility to it. <clears throat> I think it's easier to get the baits out of the mold, or at least I assume. I've never done this. I've seen some people make plaster molds and um, struggle with getting the poured plastic out. Whereas I've seen people using the silicone molds and it seems to go a lot smoother. So I've got that one and I've got a three and a half, <clears throat> three and a half inch XW Twitch, which is just a fluke. And then we have a three inch flat craw, which is this guy right here. So if you want to go with a smaller profile craw, I think this will be, this will be good. Or um, a, j a jig trailer. So that's probably what I would use it for. So that came with the starter pack. So you got uh, three packs, three different colors of the plastics. You got three different uh, molds and then instructions in the baggies and stir sticks. So um, that I think, pretty sure it was $25. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. But there was a, you know, looking at the plastics and uh, their different molds, there's some, uh, there, there were definitely some other molds that, that I would like to incorporate. So I ordered a few more. This was one. And again, I believe this one, this mold might have been $8. And you get the instructions and the mold. And this one here is a four inch SH, SX Shad. So this is a small paddle tail swim bait. Okay. So I went ahead and got that one. I thought I could definitely use this. And the last one I got, this one I believe was $12 because it came with a little bit more. Um, I got the mold and I got another two, um, another two colors of plastics. So this one here, the four inch X frog topwater frog kit. Give you an idea of what's in the kit. So I got a watermelon. Um, no flake, pretty green, pretty dark and dense right now, but that's because it's a, it's a big fat cube instead of a skinny profile bait. And then I got a sour apple, which to me from, from looking at it right here, looks like more, more of your typical watermelon color. And then it's got black flake, it's got gold flake, and it's got a green flake. I think that's a good shot. You guys can get a view of what's in there. Nice color there. And again, another stir stick and a top water soft plastic frog mold. So I'm excited about this one. 
So those are the molds I got to start off with. So let's see, 25, 35, about $45 investment to see if this is something that I, I'll enjoy doing. At the very least, I'll be making me some some soft plastic lures for sure. And as I get into this, if I enjoy it, I'll, I'll, I'll look into getting the straight up plastisol and the different colors and, and flake and stuff like that. But for right now, I thought this was a good introduction to pouring my own soft plastics. So um, this is what I went with. And uh, I think I'm going to be pretty happy with it. You're going to have to check back because I'm, sure I'm sure I'll make a video on pouring these plastics and the process. And, um, and then I get to make another video of fishing just homemade lures. So that'll be a nice challenge for the channel. Okay guys, so that was the unboxing portion. So I thought we'd put the product to the test and pour some of our own plastics. This is the exciting part, right? So um, to do this, it gives you two recommended methods. One is in the microwave and one is stovetop or overheat I should say if you do it in the microwave you're gonna want a microwave just for this purpose so um, at the moment I don't have a second microwave and I don't want to I don't want to use our microwave that my family uses this stuff lets off some uh, pretty intense fumes probably really toxic so I'm gonna go the over flame method and I have here uh, just an old camp stove that I use for camping and got an old uh, saucepan pot deal that we don't really use for cooking and after this we'll not use for cooking. So that's what I'm going to attempt to use to melt down the plastics and um, I'm outdoors. You know the weather's a little bit nicer lately. Um, you know here in Michigan we just call it typical Michigan weather. Hot one day, cold the next. But uh, anyways I'm outside. I'm not going to worry about fumes too much out here it's nice and ventilated you definitely want to do this in a ventilated area I do not recommend doing it um, like I have a little workshop in my basement I am not doing it down there um, I could do it in the garage you know with the garage door open and whatnot but um, like I said it's a nice day I have a nice workspace right here at the picnic table so that's what I'm going to do okay so I've got the camp stove I've got the pot um, I've got the Fusion X products, uh, and I've got a pair of scissors and a lighter, of course. Oh, and I have a little baggie of old crummy plastics because you can melt your old plastics in with this stuff and recycle. So that's huge for me. I'm, I'm happy about that. So I'm gonna pick a color in here. Let's see, we've got avocado. We've got watermelon, and we've got sour apple. I think I'm going to go for the watermelon. Okay. I'm just going to cut off one of these cubes and uh, melt it down. And then I have my molds here. I have a couple custom-made molds, and um, I don't have a video on making the custom-made molds because it didn't go as planned but I was able to salvage a, a mold or two. So I'm gonna redo that process for you guys and uh, put out a video that, um, that'll work. So I'm gonna cut, cut two squares off. I'm just gonna plop it into the pan, or into the pot. I'm gonna go ahead and light this guy. So I'm gonna turn it on, use the old clicker. There we go. We're going. Place the top, uh, the pot on top. So I have this on pretty low. I don't want to um, do this too quickly. I don't want to burn the plastic. You want to be very careful of that. They do provide you with some stirring sticks. They're just popsicle stick, tongue depressor type sticks that I'm going to use. I'm also at this point going to take the bits of old crummy um, plastics 
and just pop them right into the pot with the others. So guys, when, when you're catching fish out there, and I know everyone loves to use those Senkos, but they tear up pretty easy. Don't just toss them. You know, collect them and use them, use them again, melt them down. It's less plastic that you need to buy. Okay, let's take a look inside. Still pretty stiff at the moment. Let too low. Reignite. No. It's a little windier than I'd like to be doing this out here, but so if you take a look inside, it's not melting just yet. It's heating up. It's a slower process. And you just want to move things around. You can kind of see that it's starting, just starting. You don't want to work too fast. Give it plenty of time. Oh, look at her go. I think I need to turn it down just a hair. So the colors that I have in here aren't the same, but they're in the same family. So I've got this watermelon color in here. I think the soft plastics that I tossed in with it are green pumpkin. And I don't believe that this watermelon from Fusion X has any flake in it, but these soft plastics have some flake in it. And that'll be that'll be cool to add some flake in that way. You gotta excuse my dogs. No squirrel is safe in my yard, guys. So we have two dogs ourselves. At the moment, we're dog sitting for my in-laws. They took a trip to Vegas. So I have a household of three dogs at the moment. So I'm constantly moving these things around. This isn't a nonstick pan, although you don't really need one. When this stuff dries up, it solidifies into a solid piece of plastic that you can just peel right out, meaning the remains. But uh, here, I'll show you what it looks like in there right now. It just looks like a sticky mess. Not quite there yet. Okay, so that's what we have. But that's what we're looking for. It'll start to melt down pretty quickly after this stage. There we go, getting some uh, liquid forming. It's melting down nicely. A little bit better of an angle here for you guys. Another nice thing is I don't believe, or I don't, I really don't know what the formula is for this Fusion X plastics, but if it does not have salt, by melting down your old Senkos and, and whatnot, you add that salt to it. I can see little salt crystals down at the bottom of this. So that's always good to have in your plastics. There's also other additives, and I think I've talked about that a little bit. You can add scents and other additives that'll help your plastics float. Obviously, you can add all types of colored flake. All the flake you see in there now, if you see any, is from uh, this, my old soft plastics that I tossed in. It's a slow process, guys, but you gotta be patient. You do this too quickly and you'll burn your plastic and it'll be useless. The beauty of making this YouTube video for you guys is I will obviously edit out a lot of this waiting. And you guys just get to see all the good bits. Just wanted you guys to see we're just about there. There's still some clumpiness happen, happening. 
but that will soon dissipate and this will all be smooth liquid and we'll be able to pour into our molds. So we're there, that's liquid. I'm gonna reposition the camera now so you can see it being poured into the molds. Okay, let's try one of their molds. First, let's try this craw actually. I wanna see what that looks like. Okay. Cross poured. And I think I'll show you guys what I did here. This here is a KVD Ocho. I actually think it came out pretty good. It's one of the uh, six I poured yesterday. Okay. Being outside in the elements. It's here to harden my plastic a little quicker than it did yesterday. So I wanted to do more for you guys, but I ran out of propane and I couldn't keep the plastic warm enough. Again, you probably want to work in bigger batches than I just did. It's easier to keep the plastic liquid. There's a lot of uh, surface area when I did such a small batch. And being outside, yeah, it's a nice day, but it's still I think 40 degrees today. So the plastic is hardening quicker than I like. So through the magic of TV or YouTube, I'm able to show you an, a stick bait that I poured yesterday based on the KVD Ocho. So here's the original, this is a KVD Ocho, I believe that's a Okeechobee color. So I took this and I put it in a container and I poured silicone in it and I was able to make this mold. Okay, so then I poured the plastic into my mold and I made a, uh, an exact replica of the KVD Ocho. I want you to take a look at this. This is the Ocho, nice, flimsy. You know, that's about the elasticity of this. That's enough. But tons of action, you know. This bait was made um, famous overnight with that record-breaking spotted bass. Over 13 pounds caught on one of these. So tons of action to it. Nice elasticity. Nice weight for its size. Here is the one I poured. It has more action, guys. A lot more action. The elasticity is about the same. Maybe you get a hair more with mine. Mine's softer to the touch. It's not as heavy as the Ocho, probably because it has more salt in it. But, um... I'm very happy with the way this turned out and I will be fishing this come spring. I'll probably do a whole video of just my hand poured uh, plastics as lures. So, okay guys, some time has passed. I'm gonna take my craw out of my mold and see what we have. It pulls off so easily. I mean, they do make this release spray that you could use to help just in case um, it's sticky but it wasn't sticky here's what it looks like nice little craw craw bait look at that action guys so there's some excess on here and you just cut it off with scissors you just snip it off Really soft and pliable, guys. I'm just gonna take that excess off and tear it off. Boom. Boom. 
Beautiful. You got that nice ribbing on the craw. It's going to display some nice water. You got these pinchers. You create tons of action in there. I have all the confidence in my own uh, poured plastic baits. As soon as I hit the water, I will test these out. I'll bring you guys along for the ride and you can see for yourselves. So that's me pouring my own plastics using the Fusion X system. Like I said earlier, everything will be linked below. If you're interested in any of this, want to give it a try. It's fun. It's a nice, fun little hobby. I'm not going to be mass producing these things by any means, but I'll collect all my junky plastics from now on and recycle them. It's good for the earth and it's good for your wallet. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you dug the video. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Ask me some questions. I'd love to answer. If you pour your own plastics, leave me a comment. Tell me about it. Tell me what you use. I'd love to know. I'm just starting out in this venture and I'd love to have more feedback from you guys. Just to show you some of the baits I poured yesterday. Our nice Ocho here, KVD Ocho style. Got a tiny little trick worm that I use for drop shotting. I've got a baby Senko. It even imparted the, I don't know if you can tell or see. But it's got the Gary Yamamoto logo right on it. I made some of my own trailers and I even have a fluke so that's what I made yesterday again excuse the dogs squirrels be damned so you've been watching catch 22 I'm Bill I'll see you out on the water